the Australian Gold Coast, famous for sun, surf, and now cinema. Low shooting costs and a great climate are making it the new Hollywood, creating a need for top stunt performers. Stunt Park, location for a three-week course in basic stunt skills and one of only a handful of stunt schools worldwide. Welcome to the Australian Stunt Academy. Stunt wannabes have come from around the world at their own expense. It's their first step to realising a dream. We have a pass and fail situation here because this is a dangerous industry that you're entering. It's of a very high standard around the world. As we get further down the course, if we think that you're having lots and lots of difficulty with this, we might even pull you out and say, look, it's going to get a lot harder. You're not going to be able to handle it. I'm sorry, I'd rather pull you out now than have you go through and injure yourself. Colin Handley began performing stunts in Hollywood 15 years ago. He's been running these courses for four years. With safety expert Shane Sarlin, he'll decide if these rookies pass or fail. OK, I'd like to focus very quickly on the end of week scene. We're going to shoot that scene as an actual movie scene, so it's very important that you all perform 100%. And uh, remember that it's part of your evaluation process. So you've got to be on the ball, you've got to be working as professional stunt people on the day, and really show us your best attributes. We try and make our course as tough as possible, be purely because we want them to really understand what it's going to take for them to survive in the business. Our training is hard, it's, it's gruelling. We want them to survive, we want them to succeed, but we'll, uh, we'll be brutally honest with them. 24-year-old Hawk Miller from Texas. A former US Army veteran, he's used to training hard. Valuable experience for this course. Doing stunt work, once I first saw that, you know, watching someone jump a motorcycle or, you know, set themselves on fire. It was the most spectacular thing I could imagine myself doing. Uh, I've always known that I wanted to do something that didn't involve sitting in an office. Looking straight out at the horizon over there. Arms up. I, I think this is, uh, this is where I want to go. Three, two, one, bungee! Hawke's military background should prove useful for the first challenge, a timed assault course used to assess the physical condition of this new batch of rookies. As an ex-soldier, Hawke's expected to beat the average time of 1 minute 40 seconds. The wall, let's go. Get up that. Come on. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Step back. Go again. Let's go. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. Over the fence. That's it. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Slow and steady wins the race, big guy. Take it easy. Oh, yeah, keep going, keep going, through the window, through the window. Back to the start, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Oh, All righty, three minutes flat. A disappointing result. The others find the assault course easier. That's it, go. Get over. Go up. Over there. Go, 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 go. Oh, coming back. Yes! Beautifully done. Get on. That's it. Get over it. Go, go, go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Naomi Baker, the only woman here. All right. Round of applause because it's great. Beautiful. Right. A former surfing champion, she decided to take on the stunt world. I want to be a successful person. I just want to go on and on and on. This stunt course is an extreme course. You're pushing your limits 
and I'll be pushing my limits in my mind, my boundaries, um, my careers and my goals. We'll just be going further and further and further. <laughs> I have not thought about failing. All I've thought about is passing, passing, passing. That's all I want to do is pass this course. You've got to beat two minutes. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. Yeah. You can yeah. do it. Man. Australian rookie Mike Saliba knows just how tough stunt school can be. Three months ago, he had to pull out of the course on the first day. His wrist was shattered when he fell nine foot from the high pole. Now he's back, hoping his wrist will hold up as he faces day one of the course all over again. Me falling again, yeah, that, that's, that's up there. That's a primary thought at, at this present moment of time. It's just like, Mick, you broke your arm last time doing this. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be real cautious about falling. Um, f actually, very cautious. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Over. Over. Over the fence. That's it. Okay, take it easy now. Take your time on this one, and if it hurts your hand, just drop off. All righty. Take it easy. That's it. Walk it forward. Nice and easy. Well done. Easy. Keep going. Oh, yeah, keep going. Okay, balance time. Nice and slow. You're on track, big guy. Come on. Relax. Take your time. Okay. Good. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Now, all you've got to do is get down. Yeah! All right! <laughs> My heart was pounding on that one, I'll tell you. <laughs> 2.23, big guy. 2.23. That's a good run. I'm proud of myself. I didn't care if I did it in 20 minutes, That's mate. good work, I've man. I conquered that, and that's what I want to do. That's it, that's it, that's it. Mike's delighted, but it's 26-year-old British rookie Johnny Hampton who's fastest. 133.98. That's a record. Oh, all right. He's determined to make a new career out of stunts after losing his job as an accountant. I was working for the government agency back home. Uh, in the educational sector. I was made redundant, got a little bit of a payoff, nothing much. It got me flight ticket here, it got me just enough money to pay for the cars, um, and that is why I'm not going to fail. I'm not spending all my money, all my redundancy, on coming out around the world to fail this cars. I'm going to pass this cars. First lesson at the School of Hard Knocks, fighting. When you're choreographing your fight scene, always position a camera, say, OK, our camera's over there, let's work to that camera angle. OK, if I'm going to throw a slap across your face here, I don't have to make contact with you to make it look real. You just react. OK, I'm about 6 to 12 inches away from him, and I can sell that quite realistically. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to hit you. OK. Now, I can add a sound effect. If I, if I know what I'm doing for a live show, I can add a sound effect. Whack! And make it look real for an audience standing over there. If the camera's over here, they're going to see that gap and that space. Make sure everything you do sells to camera. A martial arts background helps students get onto the course. And a few of these rookies are black belts. Good night. Nice work. <laughs> That's good, guys. Okay, you ready? You trust me? Trust Okay, here we go. Okay. It's actually got him. Okay, nice I'm reaction. Okay. <laughs> You're stopping here. If you're actually going to hit someone, you're going to come around... Fighting's the stunt skill most in demand by movie makers. He needs more. See if he can get some air. As he hits lift. in harder, you get some lift. <laughs> That's the idea. Good. Johnny shows promise, but his desperation to succeed could be a problem. Colin's already spotted a weakness. Oh, class, I like it, I like it. Yeah, guys, be careful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've noticed Johnny Hampton's quite brash. He's uh, a very excitable sort of guy. He's very over the top, um, quite loud um, and overconfident. He's certainly got uh, a personality on him. Don't yeah, sure. get so close, we don't need to. OK, throw the jab. It'll be interesting to see if his actual skills can keep up with his mouth. You can't come to like a stunt training for three weeks with all these other people who are obviously you know good at their respective fields um, and not have that competitive edge. I mean, yeah, I am quite competitive, <laughs> but I just don't like to show it. I don't like to uh, to be in people's faces about it. Johnny's about to show what he can do in a filmed fight. Okay. He'll get marks out of ten for realism. Okay, roll camera and wait for me. And we're rolling. And 
Action! Johnny wants to come top again. Did anybody say cut? No. <laughs> no, cut. Okay, this is good, uh, good practice because it'll uh, introduce you to a lot of new dialogue. Don't forget, don't start your action until you hear the word action. And don't stop until you hear the words cut. Okay? That was very good, though. I reckon uh, that's got to be worth a seven and a half out of ten. Yeah. Give him a round of applause. Well done, guys. Good one. Okay, you two guys are up. Come into position. Good. Okay, here we go. We are rolling. And action. The rookies need to average at least seven out of ten to pass the course. Nice job. That was good. Oh, you have to give that about a 8 out of 10 for your first effort. Excellent. Excellent. Nice job, guys. Students are continually assessed throughout the three-week course, and each week ends with a big movie scene to test the skills the rookies have learnt. Colin uses a real movie to show them what they're aiming for. This video we're about to watch is Jackie Chan in Rumble in the Bronx. Uh, you'll see a hell of a lot in this fight scene. I'll be interested to hear your comments afterwards. First, Colin shows it without sound, so they can analyse the stunt action. Jackie Chan, similarly to Bruce Lee, had to slow down of a, lot of, a lot of his moves because they were too quick for camera. He's very athletic, isn't he, uh, Jackie Chan? Very acrobatic. That's a tough stunt, that one. You have to have lots of padding on for that one. Watch this coming up, really good use of the props, like the fridge. <laughs> so now the better these stuntmen are, the better they make Jackie Chan look. I think there was some padding on the top of that fridge that he landed on. Okay, you win. Go. Okay, good. You'll be amazed that once you add sound effects, how much more realistic it looks. Okay, you win. Okay. Very impressive, eh? Very impressive. So three weeks time we'll be doing stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the best fight scenes you'll ever see. You can imagine putting all your skills to use over the next few days and uh, trying to actually do something better than that. So we'll see you tomorrow. Peter Deeb a warehouseman from Melbourne, psychs himself up for the day ahead. A devout Christian, he believes God is guiding him towards a career in the movies. My dream is to hopefully break into movies through stunt work, creating films that really touch people's lives and, and challenge them. And I don't believe that you can't have a touching film without any action in it or, or, or great stunts. For me, the action genre is just an exciting thing. And, you know, the Bible is full of wars and battles and action, and that's what I want to do, is really grab audiences with the action. It's something that I feel God wants me to do. But Peter gets out of his depth in the next Stunt School lesson. The stunt rookies have come to a fake tropical lagoon to learn how to make fights look real in the water. Shane, the school's safety expert, is an experienced scuba diver. His students are not. Okay, now to prepare your mask, what I want you to do is spit into it. Okay, so have a big spit, rub it around. This is going to keep your mask from fogging. So just think, the greener, the cleaner. And that'll keep it all nice and good. We do get to wash really? it off before we stick it on our face. <laughs> Don't forget that part. Yeah. Okay, underwater, when you need to communicate, obviously we can't talk, so we use sign language. So 
So the first sign you already know means OK. You can use this basically everywhere except in Brazil. In Brazil, this is actually a very rude hand gesture, and you'll probably get beaten up if you do it. Now, if you're not OK, if I look at you and I say, are you OK, and you're not OK, something's wrong. I'm not OK. How about this one? Jack. All right. Hey, good work, guys. Meanwhile, British rookie Steve Langley is about to take a dive. Very good, Steve. He's staking everything on stunt success. I've been a chef. I've waited on. I've been on bar work. I've been a debt collector, repo man. I've just done it to death. I don't, I don't want to do it. I've never wanted to do it. My dad's always said, you, you know, you find a job that you love doing, you never work a day again in your life. And that's what I'm looking for. Shane takes students for their first dive. They're down at 12 feet when Peter gets in trouble. He can't equalize the pressure inside his ears and is in pain. How are you doing there, Peter? What happened? Uh, the breathing was a bit uncomfortable. Yeah? Yeah, and my ear was playing up, so I think I panicked. Yeah, OK. Yeah, That's so cool. So just relax. Yeah, I think I just I panicked a bit okay. with the breathing. So. Not a problem. Yeah. You feel confident to go back down? I'll try it again, yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Let's take it easy. If you have any problems, let me know. Okay. We'll come back up. Yep. High above the lagoon, Colin teaches how to plunge 20 feet into the water. OK, so I'll demonstrate one all the way to the, to the uh, water. Watch the way I go in. Here we go. And action. OK, Steve, so the objective now is after you take the hit, react fast to the hit, to then focus and topple and land, try and go in as I did. Go sort of on the shoulders and then onto the back. Good technique is vital because Stee will hit the water at over 15 miles an hour. That looked like it hurt, Stee. Hurt the leg. Stee didn't fall correctly. Collins got doubts about him. That looked like it hurt. You went a little bit too flat on your back. I would have come in a bit more on my shoulders. But uh, you are OK? Yeah. That's good. I think probably the weakest in the group so far would have to be Stee. And I think uh, he's going to have to work really hard to catch up with the rest of them. Uh, he seems to have the, the mental attitude for it and uh, the enthusiasm. So uh, we'll see how he develops. OK, guys, that was... Shane also has doubts about how one of his group is shaping up. He's leaving one of the rookies out of the underwater fight scene. Now, what's really going to sell this and what's going to make it look like you're doing a lot more work than you are is bubbles. Yeah. OK. <laughs> every, every movie fight scene... Yeah. Bubbles coming out their ears. Once you've got your position, blow out a lot of bubbles. Yeah. And as you're thrashing around, it's going to throw bubbles everywhere, and it's going to make it look horrendously violent. <laughs> okay, that's exactly what we want. Unfortunately, we're, there are only going to be four of us. So, Peter, I think because of your problems earlier on, I think you're going to have to sit this one out. Yep, that's fine. Okay, you're dying. You're dying. I'm dying. Yep. And these two go away and live happily ever after. Okay. I am going to be filming it. Cool. On the underwater camera. This will be part of your assessment. Okay, team one, Hawk and Mick. 
bit of bit of the altitude thing yeah. happening there. Yeah. You got to watch your height as well. Yeah. You're not yeah, just on the ground. Yeah. You've got to actually watch your depth, your height, mm -hmm. where you're sitting in relation to the other group. I give you guys seven and a half out of ten. I know you can do better. Team two. Okay, Johnny. When you lost your mask, I thought you were in deep trouble. You, <laughs> you looked like you were in deep trouble. You were selling that. Yeah. That was really good. Okay, Nomi. You looked bad. <laughs> You're supposed to look bad. You look bad. So that was really good. I'm giving you guys an eight. Eight, eight out of ten. All right. So that was that was the fight pair of the day. But you guys were both just on. Missing the scene was a blow for Peter. I was a bit disappointed not being able to do the, the fighting scenes, but um, I got to the bottom of the pool today. Tomorrow, you know, there'll be another time when I'll be able to do a fight scene underwater. So just keep positive. <laughs> Even in their time off, these rookies still need thrills and spills. Despite competition for marks, team spirit is growing. I've met some great people on this course. We're all going into the same industry and we all get along like a house on fire. So that's two good reasons to stick together. The students scrimped and saved to be here. The course fee alone is £700. So who, how did you get the money for it? I had to sell my car, so I'm straight back to work after this course, really, no matter what I'm doing. Yeah. As a chef for about six years. <laughs> oh, oh, gee, yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. We're going to Steve's house for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been serving, I've been dancing. You've been dancing? Is that how you got your money? Yeah. Ah, right. I went to Melbourne for 18 months to two years. Exotic yeah. dancing, yeah. yeah. Exotic dancing. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot for them, yeah. yeah. Great yeah. money, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Excellent. Good on you. Yeah. Oh, you Huck? Me? Oh, yeah. I had to take out a loan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. went down to the bank, crossed my fingers. <laughs> and yeah. Everything right. worked out for you, yeah? You... Yeah, it worked out. I just know when I get back, i got to start working. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's going to catch up with me. You worth it in the end, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Too, right? Mike's downtime is less action-packed. His broken wrist hasn't fully healed, but he's prepared to risk further damage because he hopes the course will boost his self-confidence. I am an insecure person. If I go through the course and I do everything successfully and I accomplish everything and I'm, and I'm content with my effort, yeah, I, I think that'll help with my insecurities and, and just with life, like, hey, I, I did this course with no problem. And it's a type of course that a lot of people will find difficult. Day three, the students must abseil 40 feet. After his problems in the depths, Peter now has to face his fear of heights. You know, I'm usually afraid of heights, but I'm not, I've got no problem with it. I just take it slow and, you know, not worry about it and I'll be fine. I just got to not think about it, just do it. <laughs> stop, go, stop, go. You got that? Stop, go, stop. You got it? Yep. Check it, pull, pull that thing, pull it. Is it holding? Yep. You solid? Yep. Excellent. Okay, pulling it through, tippy toes. Yep. Then you're just gonna lean back okay. till you're horizontal. It's like stepping off a four-story building. That's it, perfect, keep coming. Oh. Straighten your legs a bit. That's it, Yeah. that's it. Now you're gonna have to jump the window. Jump the window. Nice, that. Woo, mate! <laughs> All right. Could have done that again. Steady, race, man. Yeah. You got it. Is that right? That was excellent, perfect. Back. Abseiling stunts are often used in army and police action scenes. This calls for control. Another test for Mike's injured wrist. Okay, start walking. Just keep it smooth, that's it. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Whoa! All right. <laughs> that was good, man. That was really good. Yes. Any, any sticking points? You did it all. Piece of cake. That's all it is. Piece of cake, but just the heart was going. Once I got into the seat and position, it was just oh, too easy. Let's go twice as high this time. All right. Okay. Oh, this is just fantastic. What a buzz. What a buzz. I'll what see you at the buzz. top. Now they'll be tested in a filmed scene. 
You're a SWAT team. You always see the special police coming down with weapons, taking out terrorists. They're usually bouncing off the side of a tall building, and it's a lot of fun. What we're going to do today is a little bit different because one of you is going to get shot and die. And this is actually a safe way of doing it that's one of the most spectacular when you get it all right. First step is, okay, the first thing you're going to do when you die, you're sitting here like this, you've got to basically get shot, react, and turn 90 degrees to the wall. So you're in falling position. So you're going to get shot, and you're basically just going to spin yourself and get to the wall. And it is essential, this entire operation, that you do not lose that stop position. If you do, you will fall, and it will hurt. So don't do it. We'll take off marks as well, OK? But I think it's a little bit more important that you guys don't hurt yourselves. At the end of every session, we actually work towards film scenes because it's no point having the students learning a skill and then not be able to actually practically apply that in a movie type atmosphere. I'll give you a 6 out of 10 for that one. There will be a spectacular 130 foot abseil in the end of week movie. If Mike does well, he may get to do it. Oh, 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 sorry mate. That's okay. Sorry. Right. Just keep going. Yeah. Keep your balance. Keep back. Yep. Put your feet in. Stand up. That's it. No, nope. just, just let go. You don't need the gun. Get your feet in. wasn't just Michael stuffing up at the top. Uh, obviously, you lost marks for that. I noticed both you guys were holding on to the rope with your gun hand. How are you supposed to shoot with your gun like that wrapped around the, the rope? Your left hand must be free. OK, you got one out of ten for that, boys. Looks like Mike failed his audition. Oh, disappointed in that effort, <coughs> majorly. The rookies yeah, need to average seven out of ten to pass. Without an improvement, they won't make it. Halfway through week one, some students are faring better than others. His army background hasn't helped Hawk with the physical demands of the course. Mike's injured wrist is holding up, unlike some of his marks. Peter's panic underwater caused concern. Collins worried he's lacking the self-belief that stuntmen need. I would say Peter D would be one of the quietest in the group. He's very calm and quiet, he doesn't really uh, say much. He just needs to be uh, a little bit more outgoing and uh, maybe his self-esteem needs a bit of a boost. No worries in that department about Johnny. At the moment, he's number one. Number one. Just got through half speed one more time. But fellow Brit Steve Langley's lagging behind. And the group's lone woman, Naomi, knows she has her work cut out, keeping up with the men. Their aggression level, their fitness level, everything is like uh, always higher than the female. Different bodies, different beings, two different things. To be able to compete in a male-dominated area, you have to bring yourself up another level. Day four. It's back to the assault course. The students have to beat their previous times. Johnny was fastest last time round. He's desperate to be top dog again. Okay, take your time again. You've got plenty of time. Nicely balanced. Very good. Way to go. OK. That's it. That's it. Move it. Move it. All right. Whoa. Use the step if necessary. Use the step, Johnny. Come on. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Okay, that's it. Get your balance. Use the stick. All right. Now, take it easy. Come on. Take it easy. Excellent. All right. All right. All right. Okay, man. 137. 137. What happened? Where'd you go wrong? Why? Because I thought it was too easy. 
And what'd you do? You rushed it. Okay, that was still a good effort, man. It was still a good time, except for one slip up. That's good, okay? Keep it up, come on. One man. thing too, Johnny's still got the two best times. Everybody's gotta work harder, come on. Okay, Peter. At 21, Peter is the youngest rookie. After a poor start to the course, he hopes to prove he's got what it takes. You're as good as any one of these guys. No questions. Yep. Just do it. One minute, eight seconds! <laughs> that was the fastest time on the course ever. The time isn't just a student record, it beats anything the tutors have ever done. That was a perfect run. Piece of the legend. That's it. Just because I believe in God doesn't mean I'm not able to do things like that. And I was glad that that happened so that I could show that it doesn't make me weak. If anything, it makes me stronger. Pure proof of what faith can do, because I could never have done that on my own. My mission while I'm here is to show the abilities I have to their full potential. Next, the most frightening session so far. Jumps off the tower, a test of the rookie's nerve. Falls is probably one of the most dangerous of all the stunts you can do. The reason being, the higher you go, the more chance you have of missing the bag or the pad you're landing on. And if you miss the pad from any sort of height, then there's no surviving usually. Most important thing about falls is to land flat, to try and distribute your landing force evenly over the whole of your body. What you will find sometimes with forward falls is that you over rotate coming down on your feet or you under rotate and come down on your shoulders. What we don't want to see is you coming down on your head. Obviously, with any sort of fall, if you land on your head, there's a chance of breaking your neck, disabling you permanently, or killing you. It's the last thing Hawk wants to hear. I have no problem with heights. It's not, it's not the fall, it's the sudden stop at the end. As a child, I had a bad fall, and uh, it kind of shook me up a little bit. And I think now I realize the repercussions if you fall incorrectly. And I'm a little worried about that. Okay, you will notice with height, anything with, to do with heights, that it doesn't look that high from down here. But as you get up there, all of a sudden the landing pad looks like a matchbox. And it does affect your judgment. Mike's using a plaster cast to protect his wrist from the 15 foot drop. Very good. The more scared you are, the more buzz you get out of it. Ah, give me a ah, yeah. Jumping from the height of a first floor window, the rookies land at 15 miles an hour. It's a tense time for Hawk. That's not good. <laughs> Hawk's weight is over, but will his nerve hold? Okay, Hawk, I don't want to see your feet over the edge. When it comes to the crunch, some stunts need a leap of faith. Very nice. The fall is just one part of it. Now the rookies need to act as well. It's a tough stunt to master. Two professionals died recently when their falls went wrong. It's very dangerous basically because you control the takeoff point, you control the landing, but when the student is in the air, there's nothing you can do. The problem is that once they actually go to do it and once they step off, what will be will be. What happens is, is purely up to how much they've listened and, and how good the preparation is. 
You have offended my family, <laughs> and you have offended the Shaolin Temple. The best jumpers are chosen for a filmed scene. Good performances will boost their chances of passing the course. Now remember that this is all practice for the big scene at the end of the week, which is tomorrow. Okay, it's a big action scene incorporating all the skills that we've been practicing this week. So uh, that was a really good job today, guys. I like the way you all pulled together. Good teamwork, good performances all round. Yeah, well done. We are a team. We're a great team. We work together really well, and um, and I think it's it's helping every single one of us improve and become a better person. That's what I believe in my heart. Day five, and a real taste of the business for the students. Hints Dam, setting for the end of week movie. A full-blown action scene to test skills learned so far. Today's marks are crucial for their final result. Naomi and Johnny, with Hawk and Stee, are commandos behind enemy lines. Their mission, to overpower the rest of the stunt team guarding the dam. Plant a bomb, then escape. Bit of speed, please. They'll be marked on their team and individual performances. Cut. The movie scene is crucial to them as individuals. As a team, they're working together to make each other look good. OK, guys, yeah? And action. <laughs> Let's do it. But at the end of the day, even though they are a team, each individual performer is giving his own individual performance. Okay. One of the main stunts today is a spectacular fall from a ledge. In a real movie, this could earn a stuntman £1,000. It's risky, a 40-foot drop. OK, you feel all up for it? Yeah. Psyched up? Yeah. Here we go. Student Steve Black from Canada is a cliff-diving champion. Action. But can he dive and act? You all right? Of course. This fight scene is Steve's last chance to improve his marks. But Shane's not happy with his group's teamwork. Cut. The one thing you guys haven't thought of, OK, is the camera angle. As soon as you came in, Rick, you were basically blocking Steve. Everything you did, the kick, the punch, grapple, I couldn't see any of it. I want to see his face. Because this is, this is his shot. And, and in this scene, he's the man. He's the good guy, you're the bad guy. So getting his facial expressions is really important. If we were actually doing a scene with an actor, oh, he's going to be cheesed if he doesn't get his face on camera, OK? Whack. Collins also less than impressed with Johnny's headbutting technique. Just remember, with the headbutt, to sell it, you've got to bring your head back and jerk it. So the further back you come, the more movement you've got here to sell it. That's it. And stop it suddenly and pull your head back as well, as if you've hit him and you've bounced off. So it's like, bang, snap it back for me as well. Yes, perfect. The movie scene is an essential part of the course. Basically, what it does is it shows us how the students can take what they've learned put it into action and actually make it sell on camera. There's a whole difference from being able to do a skill and being able to do a skill and have it look realistic, believable, and good. So the movie scene is really our only chance to see if these students have what it takes. Because in the end run, it's not them having fun, it's not them being outstanding experts in their fields, it's how it looks on camera. As Colin struggles to complete the filming before the light goes, some students aren't taking the shoot seriously enough. <laughs> I'm sorry, that right keep going, keep going, you guys keep going. Go back to one, you guys, quickly, in position. Sorry, sorry, but I just, I couldn't help it, the rope just kept hitting me and it was, 
They're supposed to be stealth. <laughs> so oh, no stealth. one's coming behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I couldn't help it. I was just... He <laughs> hit me in the back and then it swung around and come across the front. Yeah, so it came around and went... Oh. Oh, that oh, was... No, the rope kept <laughs> coming <laughs> down. Dude, you are beat red. <laughs> <laughs> I was really joking there for a second. I'm like, Mick, stop joking yourself. <laughs> I, I okay, one, one of the things that I know, uh, I've experienced the same thing. Sometimes things are so hilarious, you can't stop laughing. But we could have still saved a lot of that shot because I was actually still focused on them while you were uh, mucking around. Sorry. You could have got back. Yeah, okay, yep. okay so, um, so if it it's really... Again, just, just this just is a really good up. exercise yeah. in focus and concentration yep. and maintaining total control. Yep. Okay, quick as you can uh, with safety. This isn't the only thing to cost students marks. We've had a few situations with continuity. For example, we're going to see Naomi with a headband on one minute and off the next, and um, I'm going to be picking her up on that. Um, she dropped her gun in one scene, and um, of course, that's not going to work. We only shot the, uh, the one piece. We'll probably have to edit around it, and it'll be interesting to see if we can cover that successfully. Uh, but overall, I've been very happy with everyone's performance. After nine action-packed hours, the last shot is in the can. The stunt rookies have completed their first ever movie. All right, everybody get together! Working through the, uh, through the movie scene uh, actually gave us all a chance to really experience the, uh, that, uh, that little bit of a rush of working the actual job, being in front of the camera, doing the things that we all came here to do. It's a, it's a very rewarding feeling. But the only thing that counts is how well they've done. The rookies are about to get their movie day marks. Johnny's first up. Let's get to the hard stuff, okay? You started a trend that I don't like, okay? And it's something that we need to nip in the bud now okay. or it's going to cause you a lot of problems. Right. Basically, I think you're trying too hard yeah. to do a lot of things. It started with the obstacle course. I put the pressure on yeah. and you just made a simple mistake. Oh. Okay, but that carried over on the ab sailing. The second run, pushing it with Hawk and uh, you got stuck. You shouldn't have done that, okay? You've done everything in practice. You've done it really well. And then when it came down to just that last minute on the day, yeah, you're making really silly mistakes. Yeah. Okay? I realize that. I know, yeah. I know I am. I, uh... Don't do it. Yeah. So overall for the day, I'm going to have to give you a six. Okay. I know you can do better. I want you to do better. I'm marking you harder than I'm marking everyone else because you can be top dog. Okay. I want to see you really shine. Yeah. Okay. Cheers, shit. All right. Your overall mark was a seven. 
Okay, cool. Uh, which is yep. above average, and um, we look forward to seeing uh, improvement as you learn a little bit more about Definitely. the industry. I'm going to give you a score of seven and a half. Yeah, okay, if you, if you say so, you're the boss. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we gave you a seven, seven all round. Thank you. So well done. You did quite well yesterday. We were very impressed with your performance. Uh, an overall mark of eight. How do you feel about that? That's, uh, that's good to hear. <laughs> Hawks relieved. But the biggest surprise awaits the student Colin had most doubts about, Steve Langley. I'm really proud of you, Steve. You did so well. Great. OK, we had, we had a bunch of different categories of yeah. things that we'd mark you on. Right. Attitude, top notch. OK, you got the job done. Great. Off camera, you were quiet. As soon as there was something to be done, you got in there and you were helping out. I thought that was brilliant. Overall, for your marks, we're trying to mark tough this week. Mm -hmm. We just couldn't do it. Nine. <laughs> Nine, Nine out of that's ten. That's brilliant. Nine no way. <laughs> that's excellent, man. That's oh, so good. I'm so pleased with that. Yeah. <laughs> so now you've got a task because you're going to have to keep it up. But yeah. uh, as far as this week goes, pick of the crop. Great stuff. <laughs> Great stuff. Awesome. After a week of highs and lows, the students are thinking ahead. I am proud of myself, yeah. I, um, didn't expect to do so well. You know, I don't want to stuff it up because I think, yeah, I'm the best. It's not about that anyway, but uh, I just, uh, just want to keep my feet on the ground and just keep working. From all the things that have happened this week, it's just a direct sign for me that it's my divine purpose to, to go in this direction and to be where I am right now. Even if I come up to some of the biggest fears in my life, I'll, I'll be able to control them. Whatever I do in life, um, I always like to try and give it 100%. But I know that I do try too hard sometimes. I've just got to like, take one step back, focus a little bit, just take my time and then do it. Sometimes I just like, rush into things, um, which is like obviously a, a bad trait to have in this profession. Everyone wants to be successful. You, know, you want to go home the winner. It doesn't always happen. You know, there are going to be times when everyone fails, sooner or later. If I don't pass this course, I'll be back to do it again. And I'll keep at it until I do. The students have survived week one, but for two of them, things are about to go wrong. <laughs>